Welcome friends to part 23 of the series where we'll be creating an Instagram clone in Flutterflow and Superbase. So in this video, we'll be working on our profile pages. So this is the other user profile page, other user page. And let's try to show the posts that the other user has in this grid view over here. So for this grid view, we will first remove all the duplicated containers. So all of this, they are going to go away. And for this grid view now, we will do a query. This query will be a super base query. The table we want to choose from our full post view. It will be a list of views. And for the filter, we want to filter where the post to buy is equal to our user ID that we pass from our page parameter. <coughs> for the ordering, we can also add some ordering. We can order by created at decreasing. So the most recent post will be the first in the grid view. And now in our container over here, let us also add an image. So with the image selected, we will go ahead to its path and we will choose our full post view row image path over here. We can show error image on failure as well. For this image, we will also get rid of the width, get rid of the height, and we also won't want any border radius. So let's get rid of that. So when we click on the image or rather the container containing the image, we also want to navigate to our post details page. And when we navigate to our post details page, we also have to pass some parameters. Our post detail row right here. So it will simply be our full post row, the super base row there. All right, great. So that should be it for our other user page over here. Now let's work on our own profile page. So when we navigate to this profile page, we actually need to get our user data row for our own user. So how we can do that? We can do that inside the column itself. So we can add a backend query and we can choose super base query. For the table, it'll be our user data table. And we also need to get a single row instead of a list of rows since it's one single user. For the filter, it'll just simply be our user ID is equal to our authenticated users user ID. And now we can link up the data here. So for the username, it'll be our user data row username. Give it a default variable of now. For the number of posts, user data row, number of posts. Now, or rather zero. And we'll put this for as a default UI builder display value. For the number of followers, user data row, number of followers, zero. And last but not least, for the number of following, it'll be number of following. We can also edit our profile picture here. And we also add the username as well as description. So at this point of the tutorial, you should be able to know how to do all of these yourselves as well. All right, and last but not least will be our grid view over here. So likewise, we can just delete all of the duplicated containers. Inside our grid view, we will do a super base query. We will query our full posts view, return a list of rows. For the filter, it will be where posted by is equal to our authenticated user's user ID. And for the ordering, likewise, we can set it as created at decreasing. Then in our container, we'll add an image. For the image, get rid of the width, get rid of the height, get rid of the border radius. And for the image path, we'll just set it as our full post view row image path. 
Then likewise, we can add the action to navigate to our post details row, page rather. So open our action flow editor. And you want to add an action to navigate to our post details page, passing in the parameter. Yep. Okay. So now let's work on our edit detail page. So edit profile page. So when we go into this edit profile page, we want to also reflect our currently existing profile picture, name, username, pronouns, bio, and all of these stuff. So we first need to get our user data row over here. What we can do is we can get it inside this column over here. So inside our column, we will add a query and we will do a super base query. Then for the table, it will be our user data table and it will be a single row. Well, the filter is where user ID is equal to our authenticated user's user ID. And then we can go ahead and link all of this data up. So for the image, it will be our user data row, profile picture. For the name in this text field, we can change the initial value to be our user data row, username. And we will set this as the username as well. For the pronouns, it will be our user data row, pronouns. For the bio over here, we can give it an initial bio. So user data row, bio. Then for the links, I'm not sure if we have any links, so we don't have any links. But for the gender over here, I set it as a user data row gender. Then let's also add the functionality to upload or edit the picture. So with this edit picture text selected, we'll open the action flow editor. In the on tap action, we will choose upload media, just like how we've been doing last time as well. So this will upload slash save media. The upload type will be super base. And for the bucket name, let's go check. It'll be under storage, under our profiles bucket. So profiles, profiles, make sure that it's spelled correctly. For the folder path, it'll be pictures. Yep. And then we can close out of this. And then we also want to add a button or maybe just a normal text to actually save the data. So in our column, we can add a new text, or actually we can just go ahead and copy and duplicate this logout text. So with this first logout text selected, let's just change it to save text. Change the text to save, save changes perhaps. And in the action flow editor, let's get rid of this logout action. And let's add a new action. And let's open the edit action flow editor and actually add a new action to update our super base rows. So we want to update the row, we want to update our user data row. For the matching rows, we need to add some filters over here where our user ID is equal to our authenticated users, not email, but our authenticated users user ID. Then we want to update a few fields. So we don't need to update the user ID field, nor the creator app field, but we want to update the username field. So it'll be our widget state, username text field. For our bio, likewise, it'll be under widget state, our bio text field. For our profile pic, it will be under widget state, uploaded file URL. For gender, it will be widget state, gender text field. And last but not least, it will be for pronouns under widget state, pronouns text field. However, there is one problem with our profile picture over here, because let's say the user does not upload a new profile picture, but if the user still clicks on the save changes, then our profile picture over here, our uploaded file URL will actually be now, and it will change our profile picture over here to be equal to now. So to combat this issue, we can actually go ahead and create a local page state variable. So with our edit profile page selected, we'll create a local page state variable, and this will store our currently existing profile picture. So profile picture, this will be of type image path, and we'll choose it to be nullable. So now in the edit picture, whenever we upload this, 
we want to add a new action to update our page state over here. And we want to set it to our and we want to set the profile picture page state, set the value to be equal to our widget state uploaded file URL. Then in our save changes text over here, we will change this profile picture value. So instead of setting it to the uploaded file URL, we can now set this value as a conditional value. So firstly, we want to check if our page state profile picture is set. So if it is set and it is not empty, then we know a new profile picture has been uploaded. So we can go to our page state now and we can set it as our profile picture. If a new profile picture has not been uploaded, then we want to set it as our user data role and our currently existing profile picture. Yep, so that is how we mitigate that sort of issue. Alright, and yep, one last thing to do is to add the back button functionality. So on tap, we want to just navigate back. Yep, and that should be it for our profile page over here. Oh, and one more thing maybe is when we save changes, we can actually go ahead and add a new action to actually navigate back as well. Yep, and that should be it. We can go ahead and run our test mode to test out our newly implemented edit profile page. All right, so this one is just loaded up. If we try to go into another user's profile, you can see that these are all the posts that the user has uploaded. If you go into our own profile, currently we do not have anything uploaded, so we can't see any of our posts. But if we try to edit our profile and we edit our picture over here, so we give ourselves a new profile picture, so unfortunately, this profile picture was not updated, but if we go over to our debug panel over here, we can see that in our page state, our profile picture was updated in our page state. So if we go back to our Flutterflow app, and under the path of the circle image, the problem lies with this. So we'll first remove this, and for this path, we'll now give a conditional value. So for this condition, we want to check for if our page state profile picture is set. So if it's not empty, that means a new profile picture has been updated. Then we want to give this the uploaded file URL. If not, we want it to give the user data role and we want to give it the profile picture. So now if we reload test mode again, we should see that the UI updates correctly now. All right, so if we go back to our own profile and we try to edit our profile, try to edit a picture, You can see that the X Lotto picture is now updated as our profile picture. Let's change our test, our name as well. So our name. And if we save changes, you can see that now our details have been updated successfully. If we go and try to edit our profile again, you can see that the new data is also reflected here. If we take a look at our super base table, you can also see that now we have changed the data in our super base table as well. All right, yep, so that's it for this video and we are almost done completely with our Instagram clone app. All that's left to do is actually our chats function over here. In the next video, we'll be creating the UI for our chat pages over here, our two chat pages over here. And in the following video, we'll be just linking up the chat functionality as well. So I hope you're excited for what's to come and I'll see you in the next video.